Joining me on Dirt Tracker Conversations is George Laux. George uh, is a former Sprint Car crew member, uh, current Sprint Car racer, and soon to be Chili Bowl and Midget competitor. Uh, George, where are you right now as we talk? I'm um, actually in the conference room at Tricon Garage. We just got just got done working on the midget a little bit. Had to put a, put a couple seat bungs in the car, and my crew chief is one of the best welders I've ever met. So I uh, brought it into the shop, and everyone. Everyone looked at it and thought how cool it was. A little story that we had going to the Chili Bowl this year. What uh, What do you do at Tricon Garage? If, for those that don't know, Tricon Garage is a is a NASCAR Truck Series team. But what do you do there? Uh, I'm the front end mechanic on the number one truck. As of now, I mean it's the off season, so everything changes. But uh, I'm I'm the number we're the, the front end mechanic on the number one truck, and uh, we'll have William Swalwich Swalwich as as well as a few other racers this year in the truck and. Uh, try to try to chase an owner's championship if we are booked up for the year. Um, but other than that, uh, just a shop guy and just try to help where I can here. If you have been around me for any length of time, back to the Open Red days, you might remember that George, actually with Heath Moyle, was on the original OG Open Red Crew Guy episode. Uh, George, how long did you work in sprint car racing before you made the shift over to NASCAR? Uh, I would say... As far as as full time, I would say probably five to six years, somewhere in that range. Um, prior to full time job, I've been working on sprint cars. You know, as far as a hobby, that dating back to when I was about ten or eleven years old. So, but as far as a full time profession, probably five or six years. And then I made the switch over into the NASCAR realm when I got married, and you know, we just decided that we were going to try to start a family. And you've been in NASCAR for four or five years now, maybe longer? Since 2017 or 18, something like that. So probably six or so, oh, somewhere. Yeah, so it's been yeah, five or six yep. years. Okay. Yep. Um, alongside your NASCAR crew duties at the moment, you've also decided to become a sprint car driver. Um, and I think that was something, I don't, if I remember correctly, you had done that before and then decided to start up again. Is that right? Yes. So I, I worked on a dirt modified back in the day uh, in New Jersey and uh, got the bug to itch and never could really afford it. And when I turned 18, we ended up buying a car and it was a little XL modified. And that transitioned a few years later into a 305 sprint car with the TSRS, it was called back in the day, I believe, and had to take a little, I didn't have to, decide to take a little hiatus and uh, go full-time sprint car racing as a profession. And I think I was out of the seat for eight years. And then after moving into a house, we had a garage and talked to the wife and she was all for, we bought a sprint car and started racing locally around here. We're going into our fourth year racing locally. What are like the economics of a 305 sprint car? Like, is it pretty attainable? Is it expensive as all get out? Like, wh how do you make that work? Uh, first and foremost, um, it's, I race in a series called the Race Saver sprint car. So in the name, it is race saver. They have rules that are intact to keep the motors, you know, keep them dependable. Keep, keep You can run a motor for 40 to 50 nights if you take care of it. Um, the the tires are pretty hard, so they last a little bit. Uh, the There's a lot of rules as far as uh, shocks are concerned and rotating weight and titanium and, and, and everything along those lines. But even a, a guy of my size, you know, I'm not, I'm not a typical professional sprint car driver that's, you know, 100 and 40, 120 pounds. So I, uh, you know, I, I'm still very competitive. We won three races this year. So you, there's not the weight limit is pretty high up there to where you, smaller guys even have to bolt weight onto a sprint car. Uh, I would, I mean, racing the Carolina sprint tour that I'm a part of, we race for a thousand dollars to win at every show. If you, I'm pretty sure that if you start the race, you get 200, $250, which is huge, you know, and, and that allows you to put fuel in your gas tank into the track and uh, race against some pretty good competition down here. Um, and uh, it's, it's growing with our payout that's in the purse there. It's growing. So it's pretty manageable. I, I do do some stuff on the side. I have some great sponsors that help me on that as well. But uh, I, I do a lot of uh, buying and selling of parts and do buyouts. And I, I sell some parts for Casey Kane Racing and I, I buy stuff from Alex Bowman Racing and, and flip it and make sure the guys locally have good parts and then I ship it out outside if everyone gets their, you know, whoever gets their pickings and choosings around locally. But what are the differences between a 305 sprint car and a 410 sprint car? 305 sprint car, as far as power, 
uh, is concerned, roughly average anywhere between 480 to 515, 520 horsepower on average. Everyone has bigger numbers. Dynos are different. And a 410 sprint car is anywhere around 900 to 1,000 horsepower, 975, somewhere in that range. Um, aluminum block in a 410, steel block in a 305. We're, we're in the 305, you have to buy their heads, which are restricted as far as airflow is concerned. So you can only do so much to the porting and all that. You cannot port at all in these things. Uh, where as far as 410, it's pretty wide open. It's just try to find as much power as you can and have the reliability be there for you know, 10 to 15 races, whereas a 305 is long, like I said, as long as you change your oil and keep the engine clean and don't over rev it and change your valve springs out and take care of the thing, you can run at 40 races before a rebuild and your rebuild cost is, you know, again, if it's just rings and bearings, you're looking at three to four grand. And if you're with a 410, you're looking at 10 to 12. So what about like setup wise? Are you still trying to do the same things that, you know, obviously a, a guy like yourself who worked on 410 sprint cars for so long, is it similar ideas, even though you have so much less power? The 305, it has to be a lot uh, looser just because you don't want to, you don't want to be stuck on your right rear as you go into the corner. So you have to be set up a lot looser and uh, you don't have as, you know, you don't have as much uh, uh, wing speed when you're racing a 305. So you kind of have to build that into the chassis, um, kind of stiffen up your right sides if you can. And, um, the, uh, the shocks are similar. Um, it's, it's more about, uh, more about chassis height and, uh, spring rate in the torsion bars. Um, and there's no adjustability in the wing as far as cockpit adjustability, we don't have a wing slider. So when you go out for the feature, that's what you are set at. You can't slide it back. So there's no, there's no band aid there. If you miss a setup or track changes, you kind of have to play, you know, play with that a little bit. And then there's no bleeders as well. So, um, kind of have to do a guessing game as, as on those as well. But, um, as far as setup, it's similar, but it's also very different. If you look at the, uh, the, the fine details, how is the like level of competition that you race against in the Carolina Sprint Tour? Like, is it pretty tough uh, on a night-to-night -night basis? There's definitely some really good cars. There's some guys who are still learning, but there are some some stout cars. When I was racing in New Jersey, I feel the comp just just personally. I feel the competition down here is stronger. We just don't have as many cars. Um, but the the guys up in New, New Jersey and, and and Ohio and Indiana, they're they're nothing to you know stick your nose up to they're they're pretty fast but uh, i would say as far as like the consistent front runners i would say down here is a little bit tougher just because there's just you know they're they're on their game right there's a lot of access to a lot of technology down here that a lot of people don't have and um just trying to be consistent night in and night out and not have any any hiccups is is tough so because they're everyone down here is on their game for the most part uh, you talked about, you know, basically helping guys get parts, especially for places like Casey Kane Racing and, and Alex Bowman Racing. You know, here in the Charlotte area, there's, you know, a couple of fairly high-level sprint car teams. Um, what is that process like? You know, do, do they collect things kind of off to the side, and then they call you up and say, George, come get all this stuff? Or, like, how does that work when when they've got some stuff that they're trying to, to offload, and then you've got guys who are who are needing new stuff? Uh, it's the old saying, time is money, right? So, if I were on the 49 team and, and trying to run for high limit championship or outlaw championship or, or whatever, trying to be really focused on, on being competitive, being fast and, and making sure that we put on a good show or a, a good appearance for our um, corporate sponsors. I don't need to worry about selling a torque tube for $150. I don't need to worry about selling used tires. Right. So that's where I come in. I kind of help those teams out to where they can focus on their job. And I can just offload some of their parts for them to, you know, a help the guys locally, which is the main reason I do it. I just want to make sure people are safe and, you know, have access instead of buying new. Um, but B it, it helps the, those teams out, uh, you know, uh, Casey Kane racing and Joe Gertie at, at uh, Alex Bowman, like they, they want to focus on making their cars fast. They don't want to, you know, be looking at the phone for a guy who's going to show up to buy a $20 part. You know, it's just, you know, time is money. And, um, I put a lot of time into that. Uh, unfortunately, my wife sometimes doesn't like that, but it's how we also afford to go racing. So uh, she understands, you know, we, we have a great time at the racetrack. We have little little girl, Bexley, and she's 
she's amazing. She's my best friend. And, and, you know, I miss some time with that, but you know, when I see her at the racetrack having a ball, it's, uh, it's definitely worth all the, all the hard work and all the time. I think if I saw correctly, you won one of the IMCA race saver regional championships this year. Uh, if I remember what, like, as you look back over your year, what are kind of some highlights? How many races did you get to run? Uh, just kind of talk me through your, your season. Unfortunately, with my line of work that I'm in for my full-time job, I don't get to race as often as I would like to. Uh, I think we raced 11 times this year, something along those lines. Two of them without the wing. We went, we took our 305 up to uh, uh, New Jer uh, Lincoln Speedway and Winchester Speedway and ran against the th USAC East Coast 360 cars. Had a blast. I mean, we're, you're actually pretty competitive with the 305 on those slick tracks. Um, but as far as, the, um, as far as the wing racing around here, we put some stats together. I, I think it was like eight or nine races that I raced full time or that I, that I raced this year. And our average finish was 2.88, somewhere in that realm of crazy. Um, we have three wins. We had uh, like two or three second place finishes. It's just been, it was a, it was a good year. I, I think our worst finish was seventh. Um, we just, we hit on something and it's just been working. And I've, I've, you know, tried to, I, I, I tried to help other people get faster as well. And, um, and it's been working for them. So, uh, blind squirrel, right? Uh, I'm not, I'm nowhere near a professional racer, but we, we've just done our homework and I got, uh, Justin Glass and Max Hotnamey and Eric Bonham. They, uh, they, they work their tails off for me. And, and, you know, Eric is a great, he's, he's actually the guy who put the money up for the midget. Um, he's a, he's a great, uh, go-to guy as far as keeping something clean, organizing something, uh, you know, grease and torsion bar, stuff like that. And we got Justin, who's a pretty good tire guy as far as, uh, you know, attention to detail and, and keeping stuff clean and organized and, as well. And uh, my buddy Max, I've known him for years. I worked at Petroria Race Cars with him, and he is straight, very straightforward. He will... When I get out of the car, he will let me know what I did not do right. <laughs> but at the same point, if I'm blaming, if I'm blaming myself, he'll be like, "No, it's 100 percent the car. Let's change that." So it's uh, I have a re I, my I, I I have the best crew that I've ever had in my life, and honestly, uh, they're all they're all hardworking and they all have the same goal of let's go have fun. If we win a race, we awesome. If we don't, the cooler still has cold beer in it at the end of the night. <laughs> um, but we. Uh, as far as, as far as our performance this year, it's been pretty good. And honestly, we're building on that. We've, we're going to be doing some upgrades to the sprint car over the winter. And, uh, we're going to be, uh, you know, just changing a couple things around. Not too much because we do have a good package, but it's, it's going well right now for sure. Uh, you've been mentioning the midget, uh, you have this opportunity here coming up, uh, in what a few weeks now, uh, to go run the, the chili bowl for the first time. How does that happen? Uh, what, you know, what is it taken to, to get a car ready? All of that stuff, just like, you know, lay out the whole thing for me for you getting to go run the, go run the chili bowl. Uh, it all started over a year ago. I was, uh, er like a guy who I was talking about Eric Bonham. Um, he, um, we were in our shop. We were in the shop one night working on the race cars, just him and I. We started talking back and forth, and he had some questions about, uh, like, the business side of things. And he really likes the buying and selling of parts that I do and, and helping guys out. And, has, you know, I try to – I don't sell anything that's bad. I don't – you know, I, I if it's if you find something wrong with it, you bring it back, whatever. And he loves that idea. And um, he talked to his wife, and they ended up uh, – he ended up having a, uh, he had a Mustang that he had that he didn't really care too much about. He had a rotisserie – built, you know, rotisserie built, as they say. And, um, he, he ended up asking me and my old man to help him sell it. We sold it. And he's like, all right, um, we're, this is my plan. We're going to, we're going to take that money. We're going to buy a midget. Here's your number. And he gave me the green light to go find a midget and ended up, uh, found a car by that Chris Tarrant out in Texas had. And I called, uh, I called him, talked to him for a little bit. And I ended up talking to Darren Pittman, who was still a good friend of mine at uh, ultra shield. And, uh, I talked to him about it and he's like, why are you on the phone with me? And why aren't you on your way? And, you know, he's, it was just too good of a deal to pass up. And, um, a couple days later, my old man, he's retired. He drove out to Texas, picked it up. And honestly, it sat in a shop since about April or May. We really didn't touch it with the spring car and my 
busy schedule, we really didn't have an opportunity to touch it. And about two months ago, we started really digging on it hard and um, changing bolts out, you know, making everything as lightweight as possible, still legal for indoor and outdoor. Um, but I ordered a seat from Darren, um, which is, I, I love the Ultra Shield seats. They are, they are my favorite so far. Um, ordered some belts from him and his wife. Um, we, uh, I got some huge sponsors as far as, uh, guys who the modified I used to work on Tad Cox at CTC construction. He, he, he gave a decent sizable check. That's really going to help us through the week. And Jack McNeely bought six rear tires for us for the week. And it just, everyone sees that the, the, the passion that me and my guys have, um, to just go and have fun and, and have life experiences. And all of this started with a conversation going to Lawrence County Speedway last year with Eric in the truck as well of, I know I'm, I'm not going to be a professional racer, right? I'm a professional mechanic. Um, but I envy guys like Kyle Larson and AJ Foyt and people who can just, uh, Billy Pouch, you just hop from one car to the next car and just have all those experiences, go all these different tracks. And, and he really liked that. And, um, that conversation in the garage went from, let's buy a midget, let's go to the chili bowl. And then when we're done with the chili bowl, we'll say, all right, well, that was fun. What do we want to do now? Do we want to do some, do, do we want to race at Millbridge? Do we want to go do some PA midget week stuff, Indiana's midget week stuff? Or is it like, well, midget was cool. Let's check it off the list. Let's, all right, let's sell, let's go get a silver crown car. Let's go get a 410. Let's go get a non-wing 360 or 410. Let's go get a modified or something. He just, he's all about life experiences like I am. And, and being able to have somebody in my corner like that is, is I've never, ever in my entire life would have ever thought I would be lucky enough to be in the position I am to be working full time in racing and to have the support outside to where I can have racing as my hobby as well. Um, and that's just a testament to the, you know, be a good person and good people will be around you as well. You know, what is the car? What's the, like, what's the chassis? What's the engine? Like, what, what are you putting together? It's a, uh, it's a 2013 or 14 spike. Um, it's a carbon body, all titanium, Willwood brakes on it. Um, it's got uh, a SB2 engine in it, um, which is a very, very, very good short track motor. Um, as far as, you know, taking it to Lawrenceburg or anything like that, I don't really think that's really up our alley. But um, it's, a, it's a really good short track motor, great for the Chili Bowl. There's quite a few out there. It's not a Toyota or SR11X, but again, you know, we're going out there for the first time and we're just going to see what we do. So um, it's got uh, Kaiser wheels on it and uh, ARS shocks. It's, it's, a, it's a really, really nice car. We put it on the ground the other night for the first time after we went through the whole thing and squared it up. And it's, uh, it's it, my jaw dropped when I looked at all the details that my guys put into it. And um, I asked them for all of their help as far as cutting bolts down and putting titanium, you know, little 316 bolts in. And um, I felt like a, a, a schlub because, you know, I was still big. So I ended up uh, talking to David Lewis at Robert Yates Racing Engines and uh, his wife's a nutritionist. And she got me on a, a, a plan last week and I ended up dropping 15 pounds in a week. And I plan on doing it again right before we leave for the Chili Bowl. So hopefully we're, we chopped. 12 pounds off the car so far, I believe is our number. And I'm hoping to be down 20 to 30 pounds myself just as a, you know, try to help us out as much as we can. It's not the, it, it you know, being the lightest car there isn't going to make you win the race, the experience, the setup, all of that goes into it. Um, but we're just trying to help ourselves out as much as we can try to get to those lower number letters on Saturday. That's our, that's our goal. Our, uh, our main goal going into this whole week is a uh, race after lunch on Saturday. If we can race after lunch, we've done it. <laughs> but, have you talked to anybody about like what you need to do in the car, how you drive a midget? Have you leaned on anybody? Um, so Brian Dunlap has been amazing. He's uh, he's local. He's you know he's works at World Racing Group. He's got, obviously has his two cars at the Chili Bowl, and he's very uh, ingenuitive. He's very crafty. He's very smart, and um, and I don't I don't try to bug him too much because he is a very busy guy but when every time i i reach out to him he he helps me we ended up i put his sticker on the car for for the chili bowl because he's just been you know great help and um 
actually another one is uh, Billy Wilburn. He's our he works here in the shop. Old old spring car driver Billy Wilburn. He um, he he first heard about me going to Chili Bowl. He's like, I'm best friends with Emmett Hahn. I go golfing with him all the time. Let me call him and. You know, he got me. I wanted to qualify on Tuesday night. He, he made a call, and I'm qualifying Tuesday night. And um, he said he's going to be in the in the field watching, and um, he's been helping me out as far as driving and what it used to be like. Um, and then uh, Joe Gertie at, at Alex Bowman Racing has been pretty helpful as far as uh, just getting me off and running, off the ground and running, as far as squaring the car and such. Um, but other than that, like I, I work right around the corner from Chad Boat, and I'm. I, we're trying to just do it how we do the sprint car and just try to be our own entity and, and learn and have fun. Obviously I'm going to lean on people and, and, and I'm going to be blown Darren Pittman's phone up here in a little bit and just as, as much knowledge as I can gain, but I also want to do it ourselves. You know, I don't want to be a, a subsidiary of another team. I want to, I want this to be a finally racing team. So that's, that was the goal that we had going into it was we could rent a car, but then it wouldn't be the way we do it. And that's what, that's what me and Eric wanted was something that we do. So this is just an expansion of our sprint car operation is, is how we look at it. For somebody like yourself, who, who was a, a crew member for as long as you were in, in you know, in, in up and down the road with the world of outlaws. Um, I, I know you're not in it anymore. I know you still have obviously lots of connections and, you know, I ran into you at world finals. Um, but what are your thoughts kind of on the current state of things, high limit versus the outlaws? Like, what do you see kind of from where, where you sit now and, and the people you talked about, you know, how, how do you feel about the whole situation? Everyone's got to make money. Um, you know, the, the, the high limit deal. I'm really, really proud of Brad and Kyle and everybody involved in, in that for how big it's getting and how big it's going to be. It seems like every other day, another driver is announcing they're going to be following that deal. Um, but I also, you know, the world of outlaws is the greatest show on dirt, you know, that's still, they're, they're still, they, their purses are the biggest and their, their tow money and all that. Like it's, you know, it's, I think it's healthy for sprint car racing. There's a lot of people who feel like it's tearing it down, tearing it apart, but I think it's done nothing but strengthen it because now instead of one big wig, you have competition and competition only makes everything better. It, it makes you as a business, if you're involved in that competition, it makes you look at your business and try to compete with the other side. So if that means, you know, more tow money, if it means, you know, better sponsorship packages or, or, um, better racetracks going you, that you're going to. It's, you know, everything is a package. The, the high limit deal having their own traveling safety crew is huge. Like that is something that is, that, that should have been done a long time ago, in my opinion, just for the simple fact of you get a tow truck driver who puts a fire suit on, on a Saturday night. He doesn't know how to get a sprint car driver out. He doesn't know that the tour tube could hit the bottom of the seat and break it back. He doesn't know this stuff. And to have, to have a traveling group follow the tour is great. It's, it's probably one of the better decisions I feel like they've made. Um, but what do you think about, I, I feel like the, the, um, you know, the, 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 the smaller number of races, right? Like that's something that, you know, that Brad has, you know, has talked about and, and, you know, having more off weeks and, and guys can either choose to race or they can stay home. Uh, you know, we've heard about, you know, the ability for guys like Rico and Brent Marks to, to take weekends off when they want to, as a guy who was a crew member, how important is that, you know, some of that flexibility for you guys? And do you think, you know, going forward, maybe it'll be easier for high limit teams to have crew guys versus maybe an, an outlaw schedule or, you know, maybe, you know, an 80, 90, 100 race schedule where, you know, is, is that something that's going to make life easier for those guys? Is it going to make them easier to find crew members for those teams? It'll probably make it easier. It's just being a crew, no matter what deal you're on, right? No matter what deal you're on, it's hard work. And, and I feel like that work ethic is starting to diminish in the younger generation. Um, but the, the guys who work on the high limit deal, they're still going to be, I feel like they're still going to be running 80, 90 races, even though the schedule is about 60. I, they're, they're still going to be running the same roughly amount of races. So it's still going to be a, 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 you know, a, a chore. It's still going to be a, a hard job. Um, I think the flexibility of, of, you know, if you can't make it to a show that's not a high limit show, then oh, oh well, right? Whereas, you know, that 80 races that the outlaws have is, you know, you still have to be there. So 
I, I think it might be a little easier to find somebody to, you know, if, if I were a guy and looking for a job and I had an outlaw team and a high limit team offer me the same amount of money and the high limit deal is, you know, we only have to run 60 races, but we want to run more. I might go that direction. Um, I, uh, I just, I don't know. It's, it's tough. It's just, like I said, it's, it's the work ethic of the younger generation. Unfortunately is just not where it used to be when, when I was younger, all I wanted to do was work on sprint cars and I, I did it and it was great. It was hard work. I traveled the country, but it's, uh, it's just hard to find those people anymore, no matter where you are. And, and we experience it in the NASCAR world as well. It's just people who are mechanically inclined and, and want to learn and want to be better and want to make, sh make stuff fast. It's, it's hard to find that, that little niche of people anymore, unfortunately. Do you think there are still like a bunch of people that want to do it and they just like maybe don't have the skills or the mindset or, or, or do you think there's like even a dwindling number of people who even want to do it? I think the same amount of people want to do it. Honestly, I, I also feel like a lot of people don't know how, right. And, and with the outlaws and the, the high limit deal, the biggest thing I can tell anybody who wants to get into it is if you're 21, get your CDL. If you're, you, you just, it's hard to be a crew member on those deals if you don't have your commercial driver's license. And as soon as you get that, that makes, that makes your worth and your value go way up for teams because it's somebody else. There's, there's not a lot of people on the team. So there's somebody else who can drop their rate, which needs to be done with the DOT laws. So, um, if, if anybody is ever interested in getting into the sprint car world or even the, the dirt late model world or, or USAC world or anything is get your CDL and go to a local track and find a guy and help him. Just say, I'll pay my way in and just teach me and go to a shop and clean and do tires and, and then I'll let you grease bars or, or, you know, eventually run the valves and all that stuff builds and, and, and adds to your resume to where your value goes up. And you can, um, you can, uh, you know, ask for more money, ask for more experience and, and or g gain more experience and um, better yourself and better your opportunity. You are part of this like KKR pipeline from sprint car racing, like into NASCAR. And I, I don't even know like what the number is at this point. It's like, I feel like it's at least six, seven guys. You know, we're, we're seeing now Andrew Bowman go from, from Brad's car into NASCAR. What, what is it about working at KCK racing? That is like such a good pipeline into racing. Is it just proximity that you guys are close to a bunch of race teams or what is it? Honestly, I, I feel like it was just the start, right? Like you had, um, uh, uh, there's a few guys like even Kale, he worked in Casey brother. He worked in NASCAR for a little bit. Um, and then came to, the sprint car world as well. But, um, it's honestly like Justin Adams helps a lot of helped a lot of people get to where they are in the NASCAR world. As far as Ty Sipes is a car chief at Hendrick now. And, um, Michael Carver was at Hendrick. He's now doing his own micro and, and, um, junior sprint deal. And Josh Heidkamp is at track house as well as David Farrow. And it's just like, once you build that relationship with guys and, and you, you decide in, in your life that it's time to make a change, everybody who you've worked with helps you. And, um, you know, and same thing with Bowman, he, Andrew Bowman, he, he reached out to me and said, you know, I, I, I tell everybody I'll help out and out as much as I can. Um, if their life is at a point where they want to make a change, I'm not trying to steal anybody, but they can always reach out to me if they need a hand, just like I was, you know, offered. And he said, he wanted to make a change as a kid at home and his, his, uh, now fiance. And, and, um, you know, I, I, made mention to it here and asked him for a resume and brought it in. And I think he was hired within a week and a half or so. Um, he just, you know, he's a hard worker and attention details there. So I put my name out there for him. What do you think it is about sprint car mechanics that works out so well when they come to NASCAR? Is it just because you've, you've been through the ringer so many times before, like, you know, when a series like the outlaws that, you know, coming to NASCAR is just an easy transition. Like what is it about that that makes it seem like it works so well? Being mechanically inclined helps a lot. But the one thing that David Farrow said before we left for Volusia in 2014, when I worked on Brad's car for his rookie year, was he looked at me dead in the face and says, if you can do an entire outlaw tour from start to finish, you can take on Wall Street. 
And when he said that, it made me feel like after I did that year, it was the toughest year of my life. I'm not going to lie. We went through like six, eight tire guys, something like that. David and I got pretty close that year, and it was tough. We wrecked a lot. That was a year we split the car in half at I-34. It was just a really tough year. And uh, after that year, I felt like I could, I could do anything. I don't care anymore. I just, it, all it is is work, right? So as long as you have the attitude that you want to, you know, make stuff right, make, make everything faster and better, that's all it takes is work. Nice. Well, I will let you go. I know you have a lot of stuff going on. You got a little one at home. I certainly appreciate the time today. Um, is there anything else you want to say? Anything else I missed that I should have asked about? Any names you want to mention, people that have helped you out, uh, you know, here towards the end? Absolutely. I mean, I have, like I said, the list is huge on this Chili Bowl car and the Sprint car. Um, between my parents and my uh, my in-laws even helped out financially a little bit. And uh, Jack McNeely and Tad Cox and at CTC Construction, uh, Chuck Yeoman at CJY Solutions and um, Dave Byro. I got a new suit for the Chili Bowl um, through Simpson uh, Race Products. And um, I know I'm missing a bunch of people. Darren Pittman at, at Ultra Shield. Um, SWS chassis. They they make uh, he makes model model spring cars and and midgets and stuff. Check them out. It's SWSchassis.com. Um, and honestly, I uh, I try to I try to list as many people as I can on my Facebook page. Uh, if you can go to Finally Racing on Facebook, find us on Facebook on Instagram. Um, it, we we try to have fun, make some fun little videos. Um, but between my wife, family, friends, and um, just uh, SRI performance is is really stepped up their their game here as far as helping me out and i try to help them out i'm trying to you know get them to buy a couple things to help with their new fuel factory deal um just every single person who puts some time and effort into making finally racing the way it is and um how successful how fun it is it's uh it, it's i i cannot thank anybody enough for all that they're all that they're doing all that they're uh they're putting forth is whether it's finances or time or, or parts or pieces or, or apparel, um, making us look professional at the racetrack. Um, like Sean Bardell, owner of the Carolina spring tours, let me use his trailer to go out to the, um, chili bowl. And, uh, Bruce Buckwater helped us with the design on it. He didn't do it, but he helped, you know, with some little odds and ends stuff here and there. And, um, you know, I got, I'm, splitting the trailer with Scott Lawrence, you know, he's, he's splitting the fuel bill with us going out to Tulsa, like every single little bit helps. And, and honestly, if I, if I, if you're a fan watching this show, you see those names on the cars, you, you see the names on Facebook posts or, or press releases, click on their companies. If you have the option to use a landscaping company that saves you $2 or another one that sponsors a car and you have to pay that extra $2, pay the extra $2. If you like racing, it, it keeps the cars on the tracks it keeps the pit passes coming in, the stands filled. It's it's just it's what keeps this sport going, and and it's what keeps tracks open. You know, it's um if you have an option to to buy a, a, a all nader at, at Napa or CarQuest or or whatever, like Car they they both sponsor sprint cars, right? Donnie Shaws or or Brad, but O'Reilly, like if you're a sprint car fan and you want to support sprint cars shop at those two, not O'Reilly, right? Like it's, it's simple stuff like that. That's just going to keep the sport growing and, and, you know, sharing information and, and bringing a friend to the racetrack and it, all of that little stuff that fans can do helps everybody out. And I don't think that the fans understand how big of a player they are in the sport. That's actually a really great point. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, thank you for the time today. We will certainly be rooting for you at the chili bowl. And uh, thanks for taking the time tonight. Thanks. Like I said, uh, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Finally Racing, and look for the uh, the bright orange and white and blue and black uh, 48G on Tuesday night on our prelim night.